Hey, what's up guys? Tanmay for Simple Snippets and I'm back with another video tutorial on core Java programming. So today's topic is going to be operators in Java and operator precedence. So let's start off with today's topic. So what exactly is an operator in Java programming? Now in the previous video tutorial of this entire playlist, we saw what are variables and data types. So operator in Java is a symbol that is used to perform operations using those variables. Now the examples could be plus, minus, star, division, slash, etc. And there are many more symbols. So there are many types of operators depending upon what kind of operation they do. So you can see I have listed out the different types of operators depending upon what kind of operations they perform and the number of operate operands that they work on. So the first one is unary operator and unary operator operates only on one operand. So the operand would be the variable and the symbol would, would be that operator. So we'll see an example. Then we have arithmetic operators like plus, minus, multiplication. We have shift operators. We have relational operators, which can be used for comparison. Then we have bitwise operators. We have logical operators, ternary operator and assignment operator. So of course we'll see all of them in detail and we'll also see some of the examples in the practical aspect. So we'll see a program in a minute. So make sure you watch this video till the end. So moving on, there is a concept of operator precedence as well. So before that, let's see what kind of operators we have. So for unary operator, we have postfix and prefix operator. So the expression and then the operator is plus plus or minus minus. So this expression would be a variable or a combination of variables. So we'll see what an expression is in a minute. Then we have arithmetic operator therein wherein we have multiplication and addition. So star divide modulo or plus and minus. Then we have shift operator, which is this double angular bracket sign. We have relational operators wherein we can perform comparison less than greater than less than equal to greater than equal to instance of operator. Then we have equality operator wherein we can check for equality equal equal to or not equal to. Then we have bitwise operators to perform binary operations. So and or exclusive or so these will perform Boolean algebraic operations. We also have logical operation logical and and logical or then we have ternary operator and we have assignment operators. So there are a lot of operators in Java, of course, and we'll see a couple of examples. Of course, we won't be able to cover all of these operators in this video, but of course we are going to be taking a look at a lot of operators in the upcoming video tutorials. So if you haven't yet subscribed, make sure you subscribe to this channel because you'll get notified whenever I upload a new video and throughout this entire playlist, we'll probably cover almost all of the operators and their examples. So there is a concept of precedence here and this entire operator list is arranged in the form of precedence only. So the precedence means which operator will operate first. So in an expression, you can have multiple variables, right? So we can have three variables, say for example, a, b and c. So if I say a plus b into c, that is multiplication star c. So which operation will take place first is dependent upon the precedence. So like in algebra, we have the rule of board mass, right? Wherein multiplication and brackets come first and then addition and subtraction. Similarly, we have precedence in operators in Java as well. So this entire list is sorted in the precedence level only. So unary operator has the highest precedence, then arithmetic operator, then shift, then relational, then bitwise, then logical, then ternary and then assignment. So if any expression has multiple types of operators, the unary operator would be operating first, then the arithmetic, then the shift and so on. So this was just a theoretical aspect about operators and operator precedence. Let's see the practical program so that you get a very clear idea. So quickly open up your NetBeans ID so that you can type along with me and I would recommend that you type the code along with me. If you're an absolute beginner, then the best way to actually practice programming is to type it out yourself. So let's create two variables. I'll say int a and I'll assign a value of five. I'll say int b is equal to three. And now what I'm going to say is I'm going to create one more int variable, which is going to be int sum which is equal to a plus b. So here what I'm doing is I'm using the assignment operator and I'm also using the arithmetic addition operator, right? So the value of a and b is going to be added and it is going to be stored in this sum variable. So the assignment always happens from right to left. Okay, so I just changed the font so that it is better visible on the screen. So I hope this font is better visible. I just increased the size. Okay, so in this variable, sum I'm storing the addition of a plus b. So assignment always happens from right to left. So this right hand side is assigned to the left hand side of the equal to sign. So let's try to print this. I'll say system S Y S. And if I just click control space, so it will give me the options. 
I want this option system dot out dot print ln and inside that I'll say sum of a and b is and then I'll use a concatenation operator. So here the plus operator is working as a concatenation operator. Okay. Now here when it was dealing with variables of int type, it is going to perform addition. However, when we are using plus sign with strings, so you can see this double quotes is a one string which is going to be printed as it is on the console, right? So when I append plus sign along with it, it will act as a appending ap operator. It, it is not going to perform addition here because it can't because it's a string, right? So in this case, it is going to perform appending of anything that we write after that plus operator. So I'm going to say sum over here. So this value of sum is going to be printed as it is over here. Let's save this. Let's try to run this. You can see it's running over here. And there you go. You can see the answer sum of a and b is eight. So this is the output over here. So this means that we successfully performed addition. Similarly, we can perform multiplication. We can perform division. We can perform subtraction. So those were the arithmetic operators especially. And let's try to see what exactly operator precedence is. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create int c. I'm going to say two over here and along with this. So I'll just change the name to total. And here also I'm going to change the name total. And what I'm going to say is in total is equal to a plus b star c. So what I did is I'm, I'm saying I want addition of a and b and I want multiplication of b and c. So that should happen, right? So what I'm thinking is five plus three will happen eight and then eight into two that is 16 should be printed, right? This is what my mentality is. This is what I'm thinking. But let's see what happens. Let's see if 16 is printed or not. Just save this again and go and run this. And there you go. You can see the output sum of a and b is 11, which means 16 was not printed. So what exactly happened? So here's where the operator precedence comes into picture. What happened was first b star c happened, which means multiplication was performed first. So b and c is three and two. So three into two is six, right? And then six plus a would be six plus five, which, which will give you the answer of 11. That's why the output was 11 and not 16. So this is what the operator precedence concept is. And we've already seen the operator precedence table, right? So it was sorted in the highest precedence to the lowest precedence order, wherein the unary operator was the highest followed by the rest of them. If you want, you can go back into the slide and see the precedence. So yeah, this was a little bit of operators in Java programming and a little bit of example. So we covered theory as well as practicals. So in the future videos, we'll see different operators. So as we progress through this playlist, we'll be covering different types of operators like relational, bitwise, shift, so that we cover all of them or almost all of them. So I'm not going to be going ahead in this video tutorial and trying to cover all of them because eventually we're going to be seeing all of them. So that's it for this video, guys. I hope you understood the concept of operators and operator precedence in Java programming. We saw both theory as well as practicals and if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and make sure you subscribe to this channel. Peace.